You tell me how close it was. Welcome to cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. The car I have behind me today is 2024 all new Hyundai Santa Fe. It's not just any other Santa Fe, but rather it's got the black emblem on the front. That means it's the black ink edition ran in calligraphy trim. Also found on the back of this car on the trunk as well, Santa Fe written in black lettering along with that brand new flat black badge right there as well. But obviously, this is what makes all the difference in the world. Let me tell you all about Camper Setup Santa Fe, the pros and cons, because I also have driven over 400 kilometers with this car alone, so I can tell you all about this car A to Z. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it and get started. For your information, there is a detailed review of this car inside out, the exterior, interior, POV, the test drive, comparison video with this to that out of the latest Sorento, the 2024 year model. Also comparing it to the Palisade pre-facelift and the facelift, the list just goes on and on. And you will get the black ink trim, not the name, but you will get this car in North America market as well. It will still be under calligraphy trim. So do look for the car that has the black emblem and you will see right over here that it says calligraphy tag. Black ink edition is only ran with the black interior. So this is the only color that you can get. That steering wheel, it's also finished in black. That four dots stand for letter H in Morse code. Of course, H for Hyundai. With this car alone, I've driven over 560 kilometers and accumulated 7.4 kilometers per liter. It just got cold, so that's the reason why it has all low on tire pressure, but gigantic smartphone right here. The key fob for this brand new Santa Fe. We're just getting used to this already, right? It doesn't have the remote smart parking assist where the car is going to park on its own automatically but you can still pull in and out of the car using this key fob button right here there is a lot of videos on that on my channel too so check it out gigantic cup holders you don't need me mentioning that it's really big and massive so just put it on there it's going to recognize the smartphone no problem look at that the indicator lights up just like so in today's video i will go over the pros and cons and something that is both pros and cons at the same time you know what i mean let's go with the pros first the good stuff first and you can probably see i got my cheat sheet right here i always end up getting a lot of small talks and going over too many things in detail so i'm gonna use a little bit of a cheat sheet right here today the exterior first i mean just look at that look at the trunk the rooftop that the santa fe has don't you think that this really completes the design of the car like the moment i saw this on the xrt concept which also will be sold as a model hopefully fingers crossed in north american market because hyundai did portray a strong wheel to get the xrt going especially for this model no doubt after seeing this don't you think it looks just super flush and it just completes the look and the design of this boxy Santa Fe. For your information, the rooftop setup that I have on top is from a brand called iCamper here in Korea. Actual OEM product that is sold from Hyundai malls here in Korea. You know, it's made for the car and the fitment is just right on and that makes a day and night difference with the santa fe you get all this rails standard on despite the trims it's a little less than four thousand us dollars because it's got the largest one and there is a smaller version i'll drop the links in the comment below so feel free to go and check it out if you are overseas i mean yeah unless hyundai decides to export that out officially i think the price is gonna be a little bit hectic it's both got the volume and the weight big size heavy weight and all so tell me in the comment below what you think about santa fe with that rooftop on top of it it really looks amazing don't you think and that h light um, drl keeps breaking up because of the flicker so let me turn that off actually before i do that i want to show you the rear as well yep it's the flicker going crazy so let me be steady GoPro is getting crazy flicker. Of course, it's a solid light to human eyes. Yeah, I gotta turn that off. All right, now it's off. <laughs> 
I mean, I really like this um, black on white combination and the black ink edition. Hyundai really nailed it. It actually does look really great even with the lights off, the DRLs off. The white and black mixed together just looks flawless. Also, the rooftop itself and even that little point on the fender, which says Santa Fe. It's the first time in Hyundai cars that actually got the car's name written on the fender like that. Come on, you got to tell me that this car looks gorgeous, at least from the front, right? You got to give me that. <laughs> Let's go to the rear and actually the rear design. I mean, I didn't love it at first sight, to be honest, I'll give you that. But I didn't really hate it either. Like what's so wrong about that? <laughs> yes, I mean, I understand. I know what you're getting at, where you're going, but it gets the job done and it really boils down to what Hyundai gave up. So it was that design that was required in order to get this crazy trunk, this massive trunk, the trunk lid that becomes a shelter when you open it up just like so and it opens up vertically. So there has to be the space for this gigantic straw bar to be included so that I can we can get this gigantic shelter like so. So there is no space right here where they could have put the design and also if anything vertical and this thin, I mean yeah we're all gonna think about Escalade don't you think? That being said there were probably very tough decisions to be made with the taillights going vertical on the sides like so you could see the curvature right there this also helps with the low coefficient of drag allowing the car to achieve 0.29 coefficient of drag it's far less than what i thought it would get because of the way the car is shaped so boxy like this all of that curvature all of these things put together add up all together and when you open up the trunk that lower reflector portion also lights up alerting the people or oncoming traffic or anybody behind this car that there is a Santa Fe right here while I am at the exterior I also want to talk about this hidden assist door handle I've mentioned it so many times throughout my Santa Fe video how useful or how convenient that could be when it comes to getting yourself on top of you can hold on to this and also the doorstep comes in real handy to step on it grab onto the hidden assist door handle stick your foot in like so on top of the tire easily look at that I can easily get an access to the roof. Uh, another huge plus, especially with the camper setup, like so. And it really was useful when I was setting up a tent and getting in up and down of the car and whatnot. Don't worry about it. There is the drain inside, so water is not going to cause any issue. And if you didn't know, there is also this key fob you can use. You can use the key to lock it and unlock it. Trunk opening level. I also made a comparison video with the Palisade so I've gone over it in detail over there so make sure to check that video out but it is largest in its kind and category and you can see how easily I can just sit on top of this trunk and let myself in just like that and when I do because the third row seat has so much headroom it's actually carved in a ridiculous amount not sure if GoPro will be catching that. That is where I can get this much space and coziness inside. And trust me, there is no other SUV that you can let yourself sit on top of the trunk like so, but the Santa Fe. And that is all thanks to this rear trunk design and the large size that it has got. With a push of a button, we can actually get the whole seat completely flat like that so look at that how flat it is and the seats are all connected like so and you can do so with that seat over there too you can easily pull your third row seat up just like that push it all up and then you got the crazy amount of the headroom as well and speaking of that Santa Fe also comes in five six seven seat configuration two captain seats in the second row seats should you wish I really have to tell you this and you might have passengers sitting in all of their seats have things loaded up so it might have struck your rear view right but check it out look at that look at that so that is the conventional rear view mirror and that is digital center mirror and it just makes a huge difference trust me it's not just a rear view mirror that's been digitalized but it gives you much wider look 
thanks to that wide lens, you will be able to see the cars that you just won't be able to with a conventional rear view mirror, just, just like that. I mean, you could probably just tell from this video alone how much difference this digital center mirror makes already, right? I actually really love that feature. It's it's amazing. It is not just Santa Fe exclusive. You can pretty much get this on all of the latest Hyundai cars, SUV wise. So make sure to include this if you can get it. My personal favorite, every time I hop inside Santa Fe, I would tap on this button one on the top three times because it's gonna give me ergo motion seat the whole body massage and it doesn't really use the word massage here because it's not a massage seat but it relaxes your body and certainly does make a huge difference when you go on a highway drive long distance drives and even even the city drives like i said i just press that button every single time i hop inside the car is also equipped with hda2 I mentioned numerous times about this during my test drives. It is the latest one in the market. Best one hands down by far. Along with the HDA2, you get what's called HOD, which stands for hands-on detection. And it literally detects your hand being on the steering wheel. Unlike before, you don't have to shake your steering wheel physically, a torque feedback basis, but that's gone no more. You can just grab onto here gently. It works so long as you have two fingers wherever the steering wheel is except for this part i also found that out that's of course probably the top portion here is plastic last but not least my personal favorite you will see it right here apple carplay tap on it yes we see the apple carplay you might be thinking what's so super about it look at this my phone is not wired connected but there still is apple carplay going on that's right ladies and gentlemen finally hyundai Kia genesis gave us wireless apple carplay as well as android auto a little bit of a thing that you need to watch out for when you are making the first connection when you have been using the wire connection uh, simply put you do have to delete your device make it forget all the connection history that the car has been made the phone has been made with the car unless you do that you're never gonna get the wire connection because why am i telling you this because i spent an hour more than an hour trying to fight over to get that wireless set up running. It was made all possible with that CCNC backed up car. It stands for Connected Car Navigation Cockpit. It provides the OTA service, over the air service. So it is wirelessly updated. You don't have to visit your dealerships. You don't have to connect to USB, SD cards, anything like that. I know some other countries already have been getting the wireless connection. Finally, Korea also got it it is official yes it supports all the things that you've been getting from the apple carplay so you can customize it in your settings and so forth and that is about it for the pros that i have prepared but let me get into the second row seat let's go about the cons that i have gotten well let's get started with the obvious <laughs> So that is the sunroof, the wide panoramic sunroof that the Santa Fe gets. Pretty much your views are obstructed 24 seven. I mean, I do get some lighting through that gap. So it's not, there is no use of the sunroof no more, but it's pretty much gone, right? <laughs> so that is number one I had to point out. The car does have lower fuel efficiency, lower MPG. First of all, it weighs about the weight of an adult male. I believe it weighs about 74 kilos, and that is without the two-less setup. So it's well over 80 kilos, everything put together. Having said that, essentially you are driving with uh, one extra person every single time you drive this car. So next point is... Uh, this is the worst of it all, all the, of the cons that I have listed. It is actually the clearance. Again, it is the inevitable, it is the physical thing that just comes with the setup that I have here with the car. There's a lot of underground parking here in Korea. Santa Fe already is quite big enough. Sometimes there just are parking lots, automated parking lots uh, that I could not park this car because of the size being an SUV. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not fair to say that 
that because it applies to all of the SUVs out there. However, with the camper setup on top, me having to worry about smashing that thing off was 2.1 meters. I'm including the video and the photo right now. You tell me how close it was. So that was the biggest um, pain in the butt for me to say driving this car around because I do drive cars around in cities a lot, especially in city of Seoul. Oh, this having a camper setup was big pain in the butt. Except for the time you have this open, essentially you are always carrying something that you never use, you don't use, right? I mean, I will include it in the conclusion. That moment in time when you actually do use the camper setup, that it is all worth it because you just never get the experience that no other car can deliver. All right, so let's move on to the next point. Extra weight. Also, you get higher center of gravity because the weight is actually on top of the roof, right? And manufacturers tr really try hard to lower every inch of center of the gravity because it has to do with the vehicle dynamics and also how drivers and passengers perceive the comfort of a vehicle being has to do a lot with the center of the gravity. But um, nothing that is going to bother me all that much in city regular drives, I'll be honest. However, there certainly was also a little bit of a difference in pitching the vertical movement of uh, going up and down for a vehicle every time I hopped over a speed bump. This car having the heavy weight on top, the residual shocks being delivered all throughout the vehicle, if you know what I mean. All right, here comes the pros and cons. It is pros and cons because these points are a pro and a con at the same time. Wireless connection, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I told you about how convenient it was and you don't need me go over those factors, but when you actually have it wireless connected, actually there's a little bit of a delay when you hop through the music actually does respond a little slower. So there is a little bit of a delay. So do keep that in mind. NVH, the noise vibration and harshness that I told you about. Also dual laminated glass, not only on the first row seat, on the second row seat as well. The car is really quiet inside. And why am I saying it's pros and cons at the same time? Because of that, how concealed the interior is. If you just slam close the door, there are times that the door wouldn't really shut all at once. So there are a few times where you actually have to close the doors again because it is kind of, it feels like it's airtight inside. There were a many times where I actually have to go back again. That actually leads up to this thing right here. That is, listen to this. There is a big thud when the rear trunk opens up because not only is it big, is it heavy, is it automated, but again, it probably has to do how airtight it was inside, like I told you. So it really makes that large noise every time it pops. I'll give it to you one more time. So you heard it. So that is another pros and cons that I told you about. And this is the next point. And the reason why I put it there together with the pros and cons is because it's not fingerprint proof, as you can see. There's a lot of smudge on the displays, these things that we get. So it does get dirty really quick, but nothing a good wipe would do. Just look at this, a uh, mite sweatshirt. Just use a dry cloth and wipe it a few times. You know, I'm not even really hard trying that much. You see, it really goes away super quick and neat like that. Just love the animation, by the way. All right, so that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea if you did. I will see you in the next video. Bye. I was getting too behind the schedule, so I just had to leave. Let me give you the conclusion on the way. This is the H2 charging station, the hydrogen charging station here in Korea. Of course, Nexo is the only car that's being sold. So that is a reason why we only see Nexos here. 2024 all new Santa Fe gets the beautiful engine and my personal favorite transmission, which is the eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. The transmission also gives me a beautiful MPG 
we didn't see that number on this camper setup because of the reasons I told you. Heavier, less aerodynamic. I dare to say it is the perfect family SUV in its category and class. Hands down, it has the largest volume inside, space inside, meets almost all the needs of a family, right? Five, six, seven seater configuration. You can also get it in hybrid. Gasoline supports the all wheel drive, which is called H track for Hyundai cars. So that's it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea. If you did, I actually do like this format. Look at this. I get to show you the buildings and what's it like here in Korea. Tell me in the comment below how you like it. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.